What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Blue Shocker, the 96 GHL here with our week one WWC team builder. We are going against the Urshifu, Urshifu Waifu and the Whimsic Washington Whimsicots. I believe that's what those are, the Whimsicott Washingtons. I don't know. One of the two, so I pretty much put you in the name, and I apologize. But they're a player that we probably have no idea. As you can see by their draft, I don't know if they're a new player. I don't know if they're... <sighs> Excuse me. I don't know if they're new, I don't know if they're, you know, similar, but they're just, like, doing all this? I don't know. But, it's going to be an interesting matchup on the list. We're going to look at every match as serious as we can, unless there's a game that we absolutely know we can't make play. Also, I knew you were going to have some fun with. But, um, looking into this matchup, um, first off, if you guys haven't raced, leave a like, comment down below, subscribe if you are new, and join the Frill Shocker crew today. Ooh, excuse me, because you'd be uh, thriller with the king of the thrills. So, looking at this matchup here, um, their team consists of Cofable, Galarian, Darmanitan, Mantine, Shockled, Yoxus, Speed, Rillaboom, Melmetal, Slurpuff, Bisharp, Galay, Galay, Mega Galay, and Chansey. And uh, this team, um, I did make my transitions, but which will be active for this matchup. But I don't know if this... I think this could still be the same team. Just because Magic Arc... Um, Unaware Clef could be more important this matchup. <gasps> oh, excuse me. And I also might change up my... Um, Mega Medi just for a safety precaution. But well, yeah, we'll keep it as this. Um, I think uh, Clefable is really annoying versus my team. I think it's really good. Um, this Unaware and also me Magic Arc is really good. Uh, teleport is going to probably be one of the main things we're going to see on that thing. I think G Darm, G Darm's pretty good offensively versus my team. The question is whether he, he will bring the um, tactics is uh, very likely, but there could be the chance he could run the Zen mode set, which actually could benefit him more, if anything. Uh, Mantine's an annoying Pokemon that we have to deal with this matchup. Yes, we have some of the tools to beat it, but still really annoying for some of our roles. I think Shuckle comes because of webs. Webs, as you can see, with my team. My team really doesn't have hazard control, so I think if I see any form of a sticky web or anything like that, I will have to probably assume webs are coming versus me. <sighs> we have Deoxys Speed. I think Deoxys Speed obviously comes, because yes, I do have some dark types on my team, but Deoxys Speed can run the coverage. I think the only dark type Deoxys Speed has to worry more about is just Muck, but I don't not even bring in Muck to this matchup. Just because I don't think Mux all of that good this game. I mean, who knows? I might. I actually. Hmm. I might make a. Tr I might. I might. Might make a move for the team. I might put Muck on here actually because Muck kind of looks good. I don't know, but we'll figure that out when we have the chance. But um, ultimately, I think the and the Rillaboom I think comes because again Manaphy. If you really look at Manaphy, Manaphy's kind of like a good clean matchup. He needs Rillaboom plus Rillaboom's really good to stop any potential ground type of IT from doing work. Because even Diggersby looks really good this matchup. And there's a lot of things I might think about bringing this game now, but we'll just go with the team we have for right now. So let's break down the team we're going to be using this week. Also, actually, real quick. Um, I don't think Chansey, Glalie, Bisharp, they aren't going to really come. Slurpuff has a decent chance, and Melmetal has most likely a better chance to show up with anything else, potentially. So, but let's break the team. So, I did change up my Cinder and set, and if anyone knows, I actually did an original team builder. And again, I deleted it because I had transactions, and I actually added one of my transactions on here, obviously. But, when it came to Cinder and I had like a mixed set with some investments for uh, Pyro with uh, having Electro Ball to hit the Mantine. But then I looked at my team... I have pieces of my team that can handle man time perfectly fine. So I'm like, I don't need to waste Cinderace's offensive capabilities by doing something that doesn't make much sense. So what I decided is I switched it up and went full physically offensive with 76 HP, max attack, adamant, 180 speed. I could have ran the Jolly for bulk potentially as well, but I felt like this was just a really good speed set to go with. Um, 319, I believe, does outspeed the Darm, which is the main speed tier on this team. I believe it's also the fastest speed tier on their team. Excuse me, besides the excess speed. So basically, I'm faster than everything on the team, and anything Scarp, I'll know for a fact. Core change is there because, again, those sticky webs, plus those halves, are going to be really annoying for my team. Um, Iron Head is really good as a way to kind of hit the Shuckle and not have to waste my Powerballs. Iron Head is also a good way to hit the um, G Darm if I don't want to waste that. 
Uh, we do have Super Fang on this set. Super Fang is mostly there just to whittle things down into range of things like Iron Head or for uh, Powerball to kill. And I just really think Cinderace is really, really good this matchup, and I really feel like pretty confident with that. Um, up next, we have Hyrule, which might be swapped out for either Diggersby or Muck now, for what the team I have got planned going on here. But we'll save that, obviously. But ultimately, Digger. Um, well, the reason I have Age of Slash, but let's just talk about it for now, is this is meant to kind of just be stall slash speed. But the stall aspect, it's basically to stall terrain turns and to find out if you know terrain extender and see if he wants to try to keep his team as healthy as possible. And just to abuse grassy glide and stuff like that. Excuse me. I just ultimately felt like, you know, Age of Slash just has such a good matchup here. But I might switch it out just because of my transactions. Because, again, there's just so much of my team. It's really good. Now against this team and I don't know, man. It's just one of those things where I feel like it could be really, really good if I don't get it correctly. But for right now, we're keeping Age of Slash. Obviously, I'll look over my team again before I make my final team. And obviously, if I make any moves, I'll let you guys know about that in the battle. But originally, this is meant to kind of just be able to hit his entire team. Autobots makes me faster than Choice Scarf Darmanitan. And with my dual stat, I pretty much did everything for super effective and neutral damage. I'm not faster again unless uh, the DX just be except minus one for the sticky webs from the flip. But I just generally feel like that. Oh, so good. I love this Pokemon so much. I think this Pokemon can put in a lot of work again. But I might change this for my uh, Weezing because, again, some of his ground type Pokemon that he can use ground moves won't be able to use ground moves effectively while, especially with terrain. And plus, I have another answer for Rillaboom. If it's not Cinderance and if it's not this, would be another really good way there. I would actually bring Ocean, and I've actually changed this setup completely. Last time, the last time I had the set was Call Mine three attacks with Mundo Berry to take a hit from Darm, not Darm, um, Rillaboom. But then I was looking at myself again. He besides Mantine, he does not have an Electric type, and besides Rillaboom, doesn't have another Grass type, and kind of doesn't have any real way to stop my Manaphy. So. I'm bringing a weakness policy Manaphy this week, but we're bringing Acid Armor, Ice Beam Surf, Ancient Power. If he is not Choice Banded Adamant on his er, Rillaboom, which I don't know if they're the type of player that do run, you know, Max, because they're also going to be eventually the Choice Scarf sets, which is even if they're Choice Scarf, then their attack power is limited. If I get one Acid Armor up, in turn, the maximum they do is like 40 something percent. And then I get my weakness policy off, and then I can go for Ice Beam and knock that thing out. If it's got some investment, it could potentially be a roll, but not guaranteed roll for them to live. But with um, this set, again, we're just going to be super annoying. I was trying to go for like maybe a Rain Dance Rest set with Surf, but then I remembered the Water Absorb on Mantine. So that's what I made. So I took that off. So I went Acid Armor with three attacks. I still kept Surf. I, well, I had Skull originally, but I'm going to put Surf on there for more damage output. I originally did not have Ice Beam. I had like Energy Ball. Or maybe he did have Ice Beam. I don't remember. Oh no, it was, it originally I didn't have Ancient Power. I had Energy Ball and I had Ice Beam. Um, I have Ancient Power there because this can one v one that Man Time. If they're the one of those type of people that kind of just follow the standard set, then one of the main standard sets that they would be following would be then the Haze, Defog, Roost, Scald. There's a decent chance they could have Toxic, and if I, they do have that Toxic, it's a risk that we're going to take. But Manaphy's job here is also just going to be a defensive wall, kind of just chip things down. Uh, man, if he could still hit pretty hard on the special attacks, even with no investment, base 100 is still really good. And the coverage on this is just really, really good. Again, Surf is really spammable in this matchup. And then Ancient Power. for If I can get Ancient Power boost, that could just be a GG right there. Because I think if I get one boost, I think Man Time, after I go for the one Ancient Power, would probably be in range of that second Ancient Power to go for. And knock that thing out. Again, the boost chances are only 10%, which is a decent chance. Which is basically a 1 in 10 chance. And it only goes about, like, uh, how many max? 8. So I have 8 chances to get the boost. And if I can get it off of 1, the right moment, this would be really, really good. Up next, we're going to Elsa. I'm looking at my hail. My hail is really, really good in this matchup. Because, again, there's no ground type. There is nothing that stops Bolt Beat coming in. Which is pretty much a spoiler of what I'm going to grab. But there is only a slight little bit of problem with having nine tails. Again, if Melmetal comes, Melmetals will very easily switch into this thing. And that's kind of what leads to being really that one mon I'm going to have to struggle to kind 
kind of switch into. Because, again, there's a lot of things on my team that don't want to switch into a banded male metal unless I get the predictions correctly on that. So, there's that. But what else it really does here is it subs up the Icy Rock, obviously. But it's also here to hopefully set up a Royal Veil, set up Freeze Dry, go for Freeze Dry and Blizzard Spam and Moon Blast. There's no real safe switch in, again, for my dual stab. There's no resist besides Mel Metal. And there's just nothing that can really stop me from just spamming this attack, spamming my attacks in this. We're only max HP 112 in a special attack. 144 speed again to be faster than Darm, just to give us some bulk and just gives a little bit of power up in that. And like I said, we're bringing Snatsy here, our Arc Devolt here with Adam and Nature. I believe we are faster than max speed Darm, is what I think we decided to make this spread into. Uh, running 160 HP, max attack, adamant, 64 in defense, sub, low kick, iso crash, bull beak. I'm arguably thinking of either leading off with Sinners for the court change aspect or leading off actually with my art assault and just subbing up. Because the reason why I would do that is because with having sub on my sub here, it would just kind of, again, if it's 1v1 against uh, the Zolt, when Zolt, um, Shuckle. And he doesn't bring in Mel Metal. He tries to bring in Mel as I sub. I can go for a free Bolt Beak that is boosted by Magnet. And actually, let me look at a calc here. Mel Metal. Let's just say your Choice Banded. Artazol. Why is it always got to be this type of thing? See, Adamant. Magnet. We're doing over 50% to a Mel Metal. And uh, see if it's 60 base power. I would assume that's going to do about half. So that would do about 70, 70, 70%. Which means most likely, even if I sub and he comes in on me. Um, actually, how much does a low kick do? Oh, low kick only does 50%. Okay, never mind. So, Mel Metal could be the biggest issue we have to deal with. But again, we got, we got some new toys that can kind of deal with that Mel Metal comfortably well. And plus, once Mel Mel gets just chipped down, everything else can just really get hit hard. And um, actually, let me just look at some barrel. 116. We have 64. So actually, mm, there's a decent chance we could live after a substitute. We could. It's a roll, though. And that depends if he's not even, if he's like a full choice banded anime set. Again, he just comes down to roll. But nonetheless, enough talking. Um, that's one of the reasons why we can avail up, bail up, let me get a sub there here, and I can just freely click Bull Beak afterwards. Um, I may either lead Ninetales, I may lead Sonic, I may lead with my Mega Medicham, there's a, a lot of things I can lead off here in this game that I honestly think could really put in a lot of work here. And, uh, speaking of Mega Medicham, he's gonna be making it, she, my bad, she's gonna be making her debut this week. 76 HP, max attack, adamant with 72 in the defense, 108 speed. Now, this originally outspeeds Bisharp. But I might safely run enough speed to outspeed Slurpuff. Because right now, if we look here on Slurpuff, I'm faster than it. Right now, obviously. But the Jolly hits 267. Actually, that's not that, that much. So you know what? I'm going to take away some of that. And then I think I'm going to run the rest into HP. Actually, I'm going to run pretty much all this into HP, I think. Yeah, I'm going to do that. And then I'll run the rest into this. So now we have more of an HP invested set than any physical. But now we're faster than Slurp Up. Uh, that's another reason why I kind of just do that sometimes. I just kind of like doing it. So yeah. But now we're faster than everything except for Darm. And I, I know a lot of people are going to probably question why I'm not faster than Darm. Well, here's the thing. Even if Darm is choice scribe, right, and he gets the sticky webs off, it's still faster than me, and it can still do work against me. But that's why I have bulk up. Darm also can't really come in against Mega Medicham, because, again, I can click a fighting type move. His only switch into Mega Medicham is going to be Mantine and his fairy types. And depending on the fairy type he brings in, like if we look at Mega Medicham here, and let's just say Adamant Nature versus something like Clefable, which is like you say utility. Zen Headbutt is a clean two hit KO, and 
with the investment I have, I can easily live one Moon Blast, which is really good. And plus, if he's Magic Guard Clef, at plus one, Zen Headbutt can almost, independent if it's not like max HP, max defense, Zen Headbutt has a solid roll to KO. Like, that's really good. And then we look at something like Mantine, obviously. Really? Like, Mantine, which is annoyingly defensive. It's, it can pretty much, like, it has to be max max to live a hit right here. But you can see that we do 86 to 102%. But obviously, as you can see, I do have the P uh, Thunder Punch there. Thunder Punch is mostly there for Mantine. I do not want to deal with Mantine ever. But let's just say on the off chance right here, you know, like, on the off chance right here. So we have Thunder Punch, which a plus one does, oh my dear god. Let's just say for some reason there will calm Barry. It's still going to die if it's max. Oh my god, Mega Mighty Team is just still broken. Um, I am going to be running Thunder Punch as a, just a guaranteed knockout insurance thing. And plus, Thunder Punch is really good still, because it gets, not only gets boosted with that power, but there's a, also a chance of paralysis, along with a chance of flinching with Zen Headbutt. And for anyone who's running around on High Jump Kick, I don't need High Jump Kick to beat some things on my team. And uh, actually, let's look at Darn Rick real quick. Um, this is a really weird um, team builder. I've never done team builders like this before, and... I guess it gives you guys kind of like the thought processing of what I'm doing here. Like, if you look right here, if I go plus one with the 12 and then the 116 investment, I can easily live one crash. I can live any other hit from him and guarantee Drain Punch. Wow, even Thunder Punch knocks him out. That's funny. <laughs> but you can see right here, I can easily live any one hit. And even if, if it's Galar's in. I still live one hit. Even a, well, a Flutter Blitz is a roll. But it has to be in a Zen mode form. But again, I can live any one hit with this investment. Which is another reason why I went with a spread. Because again, I can take hits, regain health back from those hits as well. So I'm really not that scared unless it's Choice Banded. Obviously, if it's Choice Banded Darn for some ever reason. Instead of Scarfed. I could, it's still a good roll in my favor to live an Icicle Crash. I guarantee you live a Flare Blitz unless I'm chipped. Earthquake will never knock me out again. It's one of these things where, you know, you got to take again. If it's Choice Bandit, I'm faster, no matter what. Because then if I get the webs up on my side, on their side of the field, they're minus one, I'm still faster. So, yeah, that's going to be the team builder, guys. Again, I'm going to debate on whether I want to bring Diggers B or if I want to bring uh, Muck to this game. I'll let you guys know eventually on that. But until next time, guys, I'm Frill Shocker, the Nice Hedgehog. Get hyped for week one of the WWC. And until next time, guys, I am Frill Shocker, the Nice Hedgehog. I will see you guys next time. Peace.